This year's Presbyterian Women's Bible Study is about Sabbath. Today's reading from the Gospel of Mark cuts to the very heart of what Sabbath does and does not require. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Saturday, January 14th, 2023. Now and for the next couple of weeks, I'm reading through the Gospel of Mark. If you keep up with the daily lectionary, or even if you don't, right now Mark is the gospel selection for daily reading. I'll put in a short plug for the daily lectionary, by the way. If you keep up with it each day over a period of two years, you will read almost the entire Bible. And if you keep up with it year in and year out, your grasp of the whole Bible will grow and grow and grow. It's not a bad discipline to have. Today's reading from the Gospel of Mark includes two brief episodes in which religious authorities accuse Jesus and his disciples of violating Sabbath laws. The first story tells of Jesus and his disciples walking through a grain field, plucking and eating the heads of grain on the Sabbath. According to a strict reading of the law, this would have, been, would have constituted, constituted working on the Sabbath, a strict no-no. But it is the second story I want to read and talk about today. It also concerns what is lawful to do on the Sabbath. The story is, Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. This is a kind of tricky passage, often misunderstood. I have to admit I have fallen prey to this particular misunderstanding myself. Some reading this passage jump to the conclusion that the law prohibited acts of healing or compassion on the Sabbath. Actually, this is not true. The earlier story about plucking grains on the Sabbath included the question by the Pharisees, why are your disciples doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? In the story about healing the man, the man with the withered hand, they're simply silent. But it is a fair inference that in their opinion, healing a man's withered hand would violate Sabbath laws. And I suppose one could make the case that since this wasn't an emergency healing, Jesus could have chosen to wait until after the Sabbath was over and thus become a technical breach of Sabbath. But what is clear is that even at this early stage, Jesus' enemies were just looking for reasons to oppose him, and not only to oppose him, but to kill him. Now, before we simply condemn the Pharisees for being overzealous about the Sabbath, it's important to remember that keeping the Sabbath was one of the most, if not the most, important of the laws. Keeping Sabbath was part of the fundamental identity of being Jewish. But as with all such things, zealotry had a way of continually upping the ante on what it meant to keep the Sabbath. But what Jesus does here is to establish the principle that as important as keeping Sabbath is, and it is important, it does not outweigh the importance of caring for one's neighbor. No, the man's withered hand could undoubtedly have waited until the next day or even until sundown before Jesus healed him. But it is clear that Jesus is making a statement here, and it's about more than just the Sabbath. It is about our religious idolatry, our religious zealotry, which, taken to extremes, can cause us to get our priorities out of line. I'm reminded of a story I once read, I honestly don't remember the source, about a mother and child in church one Sunday morning. The child was blissfully unaware of the solemnity of the service. Instead of sitting quietly listening to a sermon that was way over his head, he was standing in the pew looking at all the people around him. 
when he would catch someone's eye and they would smile at him, he would dissolve into laughter. Now, I'm sure his mother was mortified that her child was being disruptive. Whatever she thought, though, she forcefully turned him around and sat him down, scolded him for making a scene. Then he started to cry and just sat there despondent. Good, said his mother. Now sit up and pay attention. It's a painful story, but it nicely illustrates what happens when we let the formal elements of the faith, such as keeping the Sabbath laws, overshadows the deeper elements of the faith, like the need to care for neighbor. While we are clearly meant to identify with Jesus in this story, and we should, we also need to be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves whether in our zeal for the faith, we have sometimes let the outer forms of the faith outweigh the inner imperative to care for our neighbor. We've all done it. When we return on Monday, Jesus exercises and delegates authority. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you this day and in all the days ahead.